I welcome you all uh, to today's webinar. Today we have a webinar by one of my favorite speakers so far, Antara Bhargava. She's a user experience lead at One Thing Design Studios. Uh, she is an arts and design professional with a bachelor's of design. And uh, this, this particular degree was focused in visual communication and strategic branding. That's her forte as well. One of my favorite things is that she's an, she's a brilliant orator altogether and which is evident in podcasts like Decoding Digital Transformation that was spearheaded by her or the UX Laws Understanding. Besides that, Antara is having professional. So sorry again about the technical glitches, but really excited, Antara. Over to you. I'll let you spearhead the conversation and take it forward from here. Sure, no problem. I think more or less I understood majority of it. Thank you so much for the introduction. Uh, let's take it from here. All right. Hi guys, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Some of you I think were part of the last masterclass, so welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about uh, the top UX, UI roles, the different types, understanding the role, the requirements and skills and sort of deep diving into some of them. So just like last time, we're going to start with a meme because these titles are getting a little too complicated from a designer to a UX architect to, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, three years down the line, we have a connoisseur of human empathy architecture. But the thing is that almost 90% of today's design job titles were actually created within the last five years. So there's a lot, hap there's a lot happening in this industry and a lot that we have to catch up with. Looking back in 2009, everyone was called a web designer. So UX design is in fact one of the most recognizable job titles right now in the UX field. It's so common that the entire field is again called UX design, which is misleading. That is not the case. If you were to go and pursue a degree in this, you would probably go and do an HCI course, which is a human computer interaction. This is where we are now. So from UX designer to UX unicorn, uh, titles keep on emerging. User experience design is actually in itself a very fluid and evolving industry, right? So the UX roles also vary with the organization. So if you were to work in a smaller organization, you would have a broader set of responsibilities where you would probably take care of something end to end. Whereas if you were in a larger organization, you would have more specialized roles, which could be like a UX researcher or a UX architect. So where does that leave the new designers and the newbies who aren't sure where they want to get in? The only thing to remember is that your job title does not matter early on. UX industry right now does not have standardized job titles. What has more weight is in fact your skill set and the list of skills that are listed down with the job requirement of the job title. I will be, of course, today walking you guys through those skills. But before we deep dive into that, I want to walk you guys through the process and the entire um, step A to step Z uh, of the entire journey. So that what we can do is we can objectively look at these design roles and define them as much as possible. All right, so if you can see this here, this is the five phase process, which some of you might be sort of well versed with, right? You might have seen it on case studies and documentations on Medium. We start with emphasize where you learn your users' um, needs, you gather data, which goes on to defining what those problems are, what the needs are, how can we expand on them. We then ideate where you generate design solutions to solve the particular problem, moving on to prototyping where you create mockups and eventually, of course, the final product, and then moves over to testing where you validate the results and you sort of go and check it out and how it's working. Now, this is not a linear process. It doesn't mean that it goes one, two, three, four, five. In fact, sometimes when we test it out, we might feel like we've missed out some things or we found um, maybe a change in the user behavior. So we go back to emphasize. And in fact, we add in that data and make it a very agile and iterative process. Now, as you can see here, the stages are very closely connected and they overlap a lot. And it's an iterative process by nature, which is why partly these job roles are so vaguely connected together because it's hard to separate the entire process. It is one which has been split into specialized uh, buckets. So let's start with decoding now some of them. The most basic ones, which of course now we are well versed with are UX UI designers, experience designers and interaction designers. Now these designers are generalist. 
That means they cover a little bit of um, everything in the entire process. As a UX designer, you will understand your user's needs. You will generate ideas to solve the problem. And you will um, you know, prototype your designs and finally test them out, essentially participating in all of these five stages of design. And what changes now pose this is specific sections and specific parts of the process that people want to specialize in or they're more interested at. So now say if you want to be a UX researcher, or a UX analyst, let's start with the researcher first. If you remove ideate and prototype from this entire flow and keep emphasize, uh, empathize design and test, that's where a UX researcher comes in, who is more along the lines of a specialist. A UX researcher looks at qualitative and quantitative data and uses these research methods to sort of provide real user information. And he passes it on to the designer so they can inform their entire process. As a UX researcher, you will take part in the initial stages of design where you will empathize with the users to gain a holistic understanding of what their needs are, define what their problem points are, and promote it in the entire journey of product creation. Now, uh, UX researchers, people have this misconception that it's only in the beginning that they sort of get in and then they get out, but they also have to test it out. So if they're bad, they have to validate these use cases and go back to the drawing board and see if they're hypothesis and their understanding is correct. UX analyst, on the other hand, is a more critical job when you're looking at metrics. So this is somebody who looks at data, who tries to analyze it, who tries to improve either the adoption or the conversion or the retention. There are 100 other metrics that we discussed in the last masterclass that I was there, right? So they look at all of these and they try and create a plan of sorts to be able to achieve a goal. And they determine the best way to create these realistic goals and to achieve them. So for them, it's very, very important to collaborate with the product managers, to collaborate with marketing, with customer, with sales, all of that to get the data that they have and to be able to come up with options to reach that particular goal. Now, if we remove the last two stages, that is prototyping and testing, and we keep the first three, that's where a UX architect or an information architect like you might have heard come in. So what they do is that they ensure that the web or the app or whatever that they're designing is structured in a way that it makes it easy for the user to navigate throughout the entire process. So they're making sure that the user's journey is logical, it is seamless, it is easy, and they can reach towards their final goal as seamlessly as possible, right? So they also need to work with the UX researcher here. So if you look at this entire process, it's a very collaborative system where everybody specializes in one thing, but they work together. It's not one person can do everything. It's a team that comes together to form an entire product. And what they need to do is they need to understand through the UX researcher how they consume content and how they navigate content to be able to create a task flow analysis or to be able to understand the entire cross section of the website or the application. All right, now this is a lot of people's favorite role, which comes to your prototyping stage. Now, this is where all of the things that determine the visual experience of a user that is something that is developed, determined, uh, decided, and created by the visual designer. So you, they focus on creating the identity, the direction, the screens, of course, the pixel perfect prototypes that are consistent across the entire product. In a sense, visual designers focus on the later phase of the design process, but ideally what happens is they should be right in from the beginning so they understand what the objectives are and they can align those with the visual components that they also create. Another very interesting job profile that lies within this specific prototyping stage are UX writers, also called content strategists, right? These are specialists who craft the right kind of copy for your uh, product in the phases of the design thinking process. So there are lots, there are lots and lots of roles. Almost towards the end, now um, say as a experience design lead, what I do is I am responsible to create the end to end journey, right from the very beginning to the very end, but also look at feature mapping, product strategy, product roadmap. Ideally, this kind of a persona in a smaller company or a startup would be called a product designer where they are responsible not only for a specific experience, which is done in, say, phase one, but also for a more zoomed out version of the product goals and roadmap. So a high level summary, essentially, of the future direction of where the product might go, what these offerings could be, what those features are. 
And in that kind of a setup, they're also responsible that whatever they do on plan to create sort of happens on time and is implemented well. So that's where product designers come. And these roles get a little blurred with different organizations, but this is to give you an idea of what it entails. And it can, of course, change with time also. Another very interesting, which is in fact a rare role, but now we're sort of um, getting more prominent is a UX unicorn or a UX engineer. So typically these are also UX designers, but they're also proficient in design and front-end development. So here they take care of the end-to-end -end journey, but they also look at the front-end development and bring the entire product to life, which is why they're called a unicorn because they can get everything done. Now that you have some clarity on the roles and responsibilities, let's get down to certain skills. There are three key areas, right? Whether whatever part of the process you're at, but you can bucket them into three categories. One is research. Second is exp experience and interaction design. And the third is visual design. Research, like I said, is about understanding the people who will use the product, the needs of the business, and sort of aligning that with the processes and the systems also of the product. Your experience and interaction design is more integrated with research on people, on businesses, on processes, and lending that into the entire experience. So it's not just limited to what happens digitally, it's the end-to-end -end customer journey, whether it's offline, online, even if the fact that say right now we're designing a platform where we have to look at a lot of the interaction that happens offline, but how do we provide that and how do we showcase the status of that online is part of the experience. And then of course your visual design. Visual design is once the experience and the interactions are defined, Visual design comes in, makes the product come to life. It's about what it looks like, what the direction is, what the identity is. Now, these are three buckets. What I will try and do is not without getting into too much detail because you know we'd like to take up a lot more questions today. I'll outline what are certain things that we should know if you're interested in research or if you're interested in the experience or the visual design, what are certain things that you, um, as a requirement, should have uh, expertise in or be proficient in. So when it comes to research, ideally, you should be able to conduct stakeholder interviews, right? You should be able to look at quantitative and quantitative data, qualitative data, assemble it, understand it, analyze the findings from it, and then present the findings as actionable recommendation to the product teams, to the business teams, to the marketing teams. You should also be able to create customer journeys and personas and look at discussion and testing sprints that eventually we have to test out your, uh, you know, these recommendations. How would you do that? A lot of it also involves collaboration and which is very, very important. So collaboration between your design and your product teams to ensure that the research is being interpreted correctly and utilized in the entire product development process. So that's majorly about research. Moving to experience and interaction. Now here you should ideally be able to identify and uh, quantify all of the business centric goals, your product centric goals. You should be able to outline the experience through the user flows and feature mapping so that you can evaluate the entire product experience, brainstorm and create either low or high or mid fidelity wireframes based on what's a project or the phase of the project requires. And all of that only happens once you have a good knowledge of the design principles, of the visual principles and the best practice, which is why it becomes very, very important to really have a good foundation. Before you start building stuff, you should know a lot more. You should be able to understand how navigation works and what are the pros and cons of, say, having a sidebar versus, say, a general navigation and why that works before you deep dive and start creating it for the first time. That's also creating prototypes for testing, presenting these designs to the clients, um, uh, giving them the different kinds of directions and iterations and be able to justify why have you taken this decision and on what research have you done it. This also requires a lot of collaboration with the research team, product design, marketing to name a few. And lastly, we have visual design. So here what you do is you develop a visual identity, you explore directions, you collaborate with engineers to ensure the visual design that you have created translates to the final experience. You translate the wireframes into interactions, create these interactive prototypes for testing while keeping in mind that there's a lot of research that has been done before, so you can't negate it. And uh, how to integrate it into your design so that it becomes better and the product becomes much, much more intelligent. 
So creating design systems and guidelines is again one and designing for responsiveness and accessibility. All right. The last bit, of course, everybody as designers generally tend to focus on and their energy on sort of mastering these tangible skills, right? Where they just, it's not just about pushing pixels, but it's also about honing your soft skills. And they're not soft anymore. They're like extremely crucial. So one of the top things here becomes collaboration. So you will be collaborating with whatever you are, role you are in, you will be collaborating with other teams on a regular basis. That means depending on where the project is, um, the phase of the project or the degree, wherever you've reached, you will be either collaborating with the leadership to define the business roles, or you will be collaborating with the developers to execute it and bring the entire project to completion. So it becomes very important then to work as a team and to be able to take and give feedback because that's when the entire product and the iterative cycle comes to life. Second is communication, which I really stress on because you know strong communication skills are not only important to get valuable feedback from the customers, but they're also equally important to create this enthusiasm within the stakeholders. So that when you do presenting a new idea or a new design or a completely different redesign or a revamp of the website, they understand what the reason behind it is and they want to look into it further. Third is presentation. Now, when you do present, you should be able to justify the work that you've done. You're making these drastic changes to design, whether it's a small button or it's an entire overhaul. We should be able to present our work very, very articulately and clearly. Right. So to be able to practice that is very important. Do it as much as you can. And of course, you get a hang of it by the end of it. And adaptation. So what adaptation means is that it is vital that designers familiarize themselves with the technologies, with the trends, with the products that are out there, not only because of the fact that we'll go outdated if we do not really keep up, but also the product will not really uh, show up or become its best possible version if you do not integrate newer technology into it and improve the overall experience. And the last part is empathy. Now it's a word that has been used a lot, um, but it is extremely important as a UX, UI researcher, architect, whatever you are in this experience design field, you should be able to fully understand the struggles and pain points of the user to sort of put yourself in their shoes, observe them and understand them so that you can create solutions that actually matter, right? To be able to remove the obstacles and create a flow that is honestly enjoyable and seamless more than just catering to the business goals of the entire thing. So that about sums it up, uh, covers your job roles and requirements. I hope that helped. And uh, I think we can start taking questions now. I'm going to start with questions because I think there's a little bit of a issue with networks. So let's take up the first one. All right, Lakshay has said, I'm a law graduate, BA, LLB, and I want to pursue UI, UX. What will be my possibility of getting into this domain? Could I share my profile? Please do let me know how. All right. So the first thing I feel that is important is that for you to get into UI UX, you need a base level understanding, right? If you have no exposure altogether, start with as simple as looking at case studies on Medium. There will be a problem statement. They would have gone through the entire process. Read up as much as you can and try and get a portfolio together. So what you will have to do is once you get enough, say about two to three weeks of looking at different examples of people creating their case studies, you can actually start, uh, pick up a design task. Maybe you take your favorite app and say, I want to redesign it, create a few screens and build a portfolio. Of course, taking up a lot of uh, courses and classes. Now there are hundreds of them really help. Uh, they give you an end-to-end -end understanding. So maybe you can start with that also. But the idea with uh, getting a job is that you need some sort of a portfolio, even if you're applying for an internship level. It can be one or two projects maximum, not more than that. Focus on that. Um, show the people that you can think critically that you're able to solve problems and that should be good enough. Second from Shubham. I was working with a UX researcher who had to develop a prototype for a trading marketplace. He had no experience on how trading works. In such cases, how important is domain knowledge? For instance, if the UX researcher knew how trading works, it would have been easier for him. Definitely, it would have been much, much easier. But what there's something called apprenticeship method. And I'll tell you how we did that. There was this one client called Gensol. 
which is this very elaborate solar power plant, um, solar power plant management dashboard that we had to create. Now, I had no idea whatsoever on what those metrics are, how does a solar dashboard even work? Uh, and it was a supremely complicated platform with analytics and management and operational. What we did to sort of get started with was that we got that domain knowledge. We might not have gotten, like understood everything, but for the first two to three weeks, we just explored the platform, got walkthroughs, understood how the system works, read up about it. So domain knowledge is important when you start on a project, but it's impossible to get a domain knowledge of everything off, right? There will be newer clients, newer things happening, and it's completely okay to start, to do a little bit at the beginning of the project. So say if you're if you have a new client that you know it's going to get the project is going to kick off kick off in about two weeks. Use those two weeks to really inform yourself, bring yourself up to speed on what the best practices are, what the competitors are doing, how does how do their products look like, and that should help. Okay, next question: How to take a call regarding whether we really need to change the UI or not? Okay, so which is this actually is a big problem and that happens in a lot of companies. What people do is they start with the UI design, they create it, and then they want to go to the client and then say, we need a sign off. That is not the right way. So the process of UI design is that once I'm done with the wireframing and there are certain design principles that I set for it, I will also outline some visual principles. These are guiding principles. So say for this one project, we looked at community building, um, we looked at uh, minimal and uh, easy and accessible. These were certain keywords that we picked. We tried to get the uh, leadership aligned on it, that we all resonate with these few principles that we want to uh, build on. Once there is a groundwork set, then you start exploring mood boards. You create stylescapes, you show them version one, two, three, you get that approved. Then you go back and move ahead and start creating the UI. And that also not the entire thing, but a few screens. So it's always, you're always checking, validating with the leadership, and also, once you're at a decent stage, you can test it out with the customers. So you want to maybe go and um, share it across with a few colleagues of yours, or if you have a focus group that you've created, share it with them, get their inputs on what they feel works, doesn't work, how are they responding to it, and make changes. So the decisions that are taken are based on business objectives, and they're taking on user-specific goals. We as designers don't even come into this picture. All we have to do is we have to do a good job of designing it. But this goal and the set objectives are always defined. So it's factual rather than the fact that I can get biased by my own judgment that I like dark mode more than like mode. So that doesn't work. All right, next question. I'm a quality analyst. I want to switch to UX. What are my chances? So guys, let me tell you, this is for everybody. Um, this field in general, if you want to make a switch to UX, there is nothing stopping you. I've had, I have known people, of course, who've done design and gotten in, who've done engineering, who've done uh, law, like another example, somebody who uh, was a uh, psychologist and got in. So it is a very broad field. The field essentially is about problem solving, right? It's about knowing people. It's about uh, solving a problem. It is about understanding, uh, you know, what the requirements are from a project. And of course, and the design skills come in later. So you can easily make that switch. You should learn more, read up more about it, attend a few courses. If you get that understanding, if you feel like you've got a knack for it, that means that you are enjoying the entire process of solving a problem and it not being solved and going back to the drawing board again. So it's your thing. Surya, I'm trying to move from graphic designing to UX UI designing. What things I should keep in mind to grow faster in this field? All right. So for those of you guys who do not know, I, in fact, did my graduation in visual communication and strategic branding. That is very close to graphic designing and branding and illustration. And um, it was only after a year that I made that switch because that was when UX UI was sort of popping up. I'd heard about it. I had worked on a couple of websites and I found it very, very interesting. What the good thing about coming from a design background is that you already have a very good aesthetic sense, right? So it helps you in the UI design bit. You already know how things are fitting, how does layout work, hierarchy, color, composition, majority of the principles you're well aware of. So what you should keep in mind here is now that you do have some baseline understanding of UI, you should understand the process of UX, right? Go look at research tools, understand um, how can you sort of uh, pick up a problem, try and solve it, uh, look at ideations, try out feature mapping. 
all of these things will really, really help hone your skills in critically thinking and not just visually thinking. So while you, as a graphic designer, you've got visual skills, you need to really work towards your research and your uh, critical thinking skills. And there's always something that somebody needs to work on. So it's a good shift to make. And it's a relatively, I would say, an easy shift to make because you already know designing. What are the beginning steps in getting into UI UX design? Is the Coursera Google UI UX design professional certification be okay for the initial step? It is a course of series seven. So I think the Google UX UI, I'm not sure about the Coursera course, but there is a Google certification course also, which is really good. And a lot of people who have joined the company recently have done that. I've never taken that up. I did my um, sort of certification from Georgia Tech, but I did a much more HCI based curriculum, which they teach for their masters. But it is something that uh, you do not need to, I would say, focus so much on the kind of course that you have as much as the exposure that you need to get around this particular field. So whether you take Coursera or you look at a couple of others, and I'm sure you know I can always get back to you guys what the top ones are right now. I also have to do my own research. But uh, look at the top ones where people have been giving good reviews, giving good feedback, and how is that helping them and go for it. Go for something which is not... Um, maybe take a shorter shorter course first and then deep dive into a longer course so that you get an idea whether you even like this or not. Is it working out for you? So you do a quick two-week sort of a certification online and getting many certificates on a bad thing. So the more the merrier, it's completely okay. Okay, Ria Nagpal, if someone wants to shift from graphics to UI UX, what all should they keep in mind in terms of things to work on, ways to work on the portfolio, and finally, how to land opportunities? I think I've already answered this. You have a good understanding of... Um, you know, graphics and UI, you should now start creating. So first and foremost, like I said, would be to really understand what is the width of research that is required. Because as graphic designers, we always like to work with stuff that is exciting and, you know, good to look at. But there's a lot of back-end work that goes into UI UX. For a good amount, I mean, probably months, you might not even see a visual screen because you're designing the wireframe and you're figuring out the flow and the functionality. So uh, work towards that, uh, figure out uh, what, where your skill set is, and then start creating a few case studies of your own. The way to land a job opportunity is purely and purely based on having a good portfolio. Once you do that, things will just automatically follow. All right. And we have Lakshya's question. As I had no degree in the relevant field, just doing courses and building portfolio would land me in good internship and jobs. I'm 26 already and I recently made my mind for this domain and I need clarification of job position means one who got degree in design and gets certified in UI UX and on the other hand my profile with law background and done with certification portfolio. I'm very confused what are you trying to say but I guess I think what you mean here is that you know on the job position so let's start with this um, right now. So you're 26 and I do understand that, you know, you want to get into something that you're 100% sure of, but this is a new field. Even if you join as a UX designer or a UI designer or a researcher, you can easily make that shift, but you have to get started. So try maybe starting with a broader sort of a role where you get to do everything right from research till the end uh, you know, your prototyping state so that you understand where does your interest lie. And then if you want, you can always specialize. If you feel like I want to do everything, you can sort of, you know, go towards that route also. So there are a lot of possibilities, but deciding before we get into the field is a little bit of a challenge because this every organization, like I said, works very differently. So we'll have to go see the job requirement and see the listing and see what are they expecting. So a couple of places they say that they want a UX designer but sometimes uh, the requirement is to actually also create UI screens, which ideally should not be the case, right? Or a UI designer is supposed to create that. End and end, I feel, and I honestly believe that, and I tell my team also, we should all just focus on being better product designers or experience designers, because you can become an expert in one, but you should know everything, right? Right from the starting to the end, and that's where... Uh, growth also lies for you to sort of um, upscale and become better and uh, land a much more senior role. You need to be aware of all of these specific sections and not just one. Okay, from Tanishk, I'm working in customer service domain in US-based gaming company. So switching to UI UX designer would be a tough nut for me, but what should be my initial step? 
first step towards this would be probably you might have learned a lot in the gaming company could be right so try and see all of us you know at some point we feel that oh we're going to make the switch and we're starting right from zero but we're really not we have a lot of a lot of things that you guys have already learned so say if i shifted from a strategic branding role i got a lot of that um, learning and knowledge into my present role where i feel like i'm able to do certain things much more easier and they come naturally to me only because i had a particular so you want to still you want to be an expert but you still want to be a t-shaped person right you want to have an understanding of everything so first i think understand what you would bring to the table what are your strengths since you've been working already um then identify uh, maybe do any one case study and identify what are the things that you really like or what do you think you feel that you have a knack for focus on that build on it create a portfolio and then move ahead it's a very standard process right now for ui ux it's not that you know of course you can go into a you can do there are two ways to do it one is to create a portfolio and start applying for jobs the other is to um you know get enrolled into a course and then get a placement right from the course itself build and that portfolio happens right within the course so these two versions both of them are completely okay see what works for you if you want more guidance and you know you can completely go for the course if you feel like i want to try it out first and then give it a shot that also is completely okay these are two oh, we've got more questions now all right harshit uh in b2b dashboard data takes a lot of time to be shown since coming from multiple domains how to solve this issue same plus same at the time of report download it takes a lot of time to combine and download reports number and user in 1000 plus all right so this is a lot to do with say how much tech support you have now there what you can always do is as a designer suppose that you outline a way that i am going to create a structure in place say that even if you're talking about data on a dashboard you want it to be as live as possible you want it to be the turnaround time to be as little you know downloading but there are technical challenges to it suppose a technology might not allow for it you can't do much what you can do here is that you can provide this little bit of a status bar that says that you know it's going to take like another 2 to 3 minutes to do it and provide a really good interaction so one is to be able to solve the problem technically and that can be done with you know if you have the resources and the tech support for it but even if you cannot do that you can provide a fordens to the user to say that yes um it is going to take so much time but i am being as transparent even giving you the status check so that you are aware that this is uh, you know where we are and how much longer it's going to take so keeping both those things in mind i think we can create better experiences not everything is within our control so there was this one um like the last bit that i showed you right for noise the smart watch that we designed Uh, we wanted to go all out but the budget was very limited so the watch is being sold for about 2500 bucks right now which is not enough to say that i want to have all of the fancy technology behind it but how do we as designers bridge the gap if the technology cannot be provided can we do something on the forefront for the experience so that that little bit of the lag that is coming in it doesn't feel so much or the con- user is getting lost that i'm not aware or i don't know how much time is going to take and i'm sort of uh, you know trying to figure my way out on the website that figuring your way out technically should never happen they should always know what is happening at what point and what needs to happen next all right how much experience should a person must have to reach 30 to 35 lakh packets etc in ux design okay so i think um, from my experience it really depends there is there are startups which have got insane amount of funding uh, which might just if you've got a killer portfolio might offer you that ideally if you go to bigger companies i would say for a package like that you do still need to be at a senior role you cannot be a junior designer but it really depends on your portfolio and your expertise and how well you know the field so money is not i would say the criteria it's more about focusing on doing the best work and money will follow there's a lot of demand right now for this field anyway okay hi i'm a graphic designer but i don't have any degrees can i try to switch to ui ux yes absolutely you can a lot of people i know who are excellent ux ui designers do not have a degree in um ux ui if you do not have any degree i feel that certain companies might want you to have a bachelor um degree but that's really depend on where you're looking to apply so you can make that switch majority of these places do not have um, 
any uh, criteria in place apart from the fact that you can design well and you can do a good job and that should be it masters union has a ui ux course is it online or offline as on website it is hybrid and what will be the eligibility requirements for this so i think i can uh, direct this question to the masters union but it is going to be so weird one thing design um, and a couple of other people so i think you met venki and manik all of us will be taking a course which is a six month long course which will happen on weekend starting i think october and that's going to be an end to end process right from research till the point of development and thinking about the possibilities that are there within ux ui and also working on it in a hands on manner where we actually create stuff and create a portfolio for you guys so that will happen and i think it is purely uh, online more specifics you can get in touch with master junior kevin hendricks why is interaction design why does interaction design have so much demand and no supply of professions what your what's your take so kevin the thing is that right now um these roles like i said they're not very well defined so at one place you might be if you go to linkedin and you sort of start looking at jobs and you type interaction designer you might not get any but you if you change and you say ux designer you might get a lot so don't go based on the requirement but actually go based on the uh, details in the list of skills and uh, job uh, expectations that they have put on their listing page which is why i think this problem is so a lot of people might be like i want to be a ux architect right and they might not get a good listing for it but then there are other positions like a ux designer where you will be doing the same job profile and a few more other tasks so uh, don't limit yourself by searching only by specific keywords try and go a little broader and uh, look at each listing and read it and see if that aligns with the role that you want Ma'am, do a master's in design help, or I should focus on skills related to UI UX design? I think a master's in design it really depends on what kind of design, right? So, UX UI in general, I would say, is of course a lot based on skills. But what a curriculum does it is structures it for you. So, where by yourself you might feel a little lost that I don't know how to start, I don't know where to end, what is the in between? Can somebody give me assignments? Can somebody critique my work? So, all of that a curriculum helps you out with. So, you don't necessarily have to go for a master's. You can also take up courses. You can do certifications. You can join the master's union class more hands on. It's really up to you, whatever you see, you see fit. But you have to look at the. a uh, degree right so a masters in design might also mean that includes everything related to design so it has uh, graphic and communication design and visual design and a lot of other things whereas a masters in hci might be something more specific or a masters in um, interaction design might be more related to ui ux so always look at the masters that you're going for see if it gives you those um, the things that you need from the course and see if it aligns with your financial motives right it really depends or suppose you can take a two week or a shorter duration course and figure it out and then see if you want to go for a masters because masters is a longer investment so think about it and then get into it i would say all right and what are other design tools besides figma you use and would you like to suggest i only use figma guys i am very sad with this entire thing that has happened and i don't know what's going to happen to figma anymore but uh, figma works beautifully for me only because they constantly update upgrade and uh, their community feature is absolutely excellent so i used to be on sketch before i think that's about 2 years or 3 years back and i really liked sketch too but since i made the move i can't go back so only figma so far but there are other things that you can explore you can you have xd now it's together but um there's sketch which are the two main competitors i would say right now okay i think have i answered all questions guys that's excellent okay i think this is a good one how to conduct qualitative surveys when it comes to a new product and this is to understand what exactly the user wants versus what the business wants and how to align those goals okay so first the first thing would be go and have a proper stakeholder interview where you will and i don't know what the product is so i'm just going to be very generic right now ask them what their requirements 
from the product is like what are the objectives what are the metrics that they want to track what does success mean to them uh you know what is the brand's vision and mission so those try and outline don't have too many goals try and outline maybe two goals that the business wants this is maybe they want to increase their revenue and they want to increase their engagement suppose that is it right and then you go and talk to the users if it's an existing it's a new product then you understand so let's just assume this product is uh maybe we're creating a product it's a second hand selling platform right so you go and talk to them and you want to create a platform something like say oedex but it's a competitor to oedex so you will try and understand what their current behavior is like so a qualitative survey gives you not numbers or quantifiable data but it gives you what the users behavior is like what their needs are what are the current platforms that they are using to sort of um, which match the goals of your platform that you're trying to design what their pain points are um how are they with sort of technology uh, community building what are their aspirations so you get a rounded personality right and then you can try asking very specific questions suppose right now if i go to a user and i'm designing a second hand platform i would probably go and ask them you know right now uh, what are your inclinations or what are the certain things that you consider when you are trying to sell your say tv tv or say your car right online what are those certain things that you uh, are important to you and has it happened sometime that you know when you try to make a sale have there been frustrations have there been pain points what are those what can um uh make your entire process much more easier so there are certain things where you try and just gauge an idea of the persona and put them into buckets so that you can understand what the overall objective or the needs and wants of those target audience is and that is what qualitative data is so once you then have these two you have your business goals and you have your user centric goals you can then align the two and see how can i match it so suppose if these guys want to increase their engagement can i provide maybe a feature that gives the ability to maybe for a person who say buying something second hand they can create a watch list of sorts they've been looking for it they've not been able to find it but there is a watch list that they create a requirement they let the app or the website know that this is what they want and then they get notified as and when there's a new listing so that way we sort of mixing these together and aligning them to come up with tangible features that might help the entire product and the idea of all of this the entire research in general is to come up with actionable recommendations that is all there is there is you can do as much research as you want but the idea is to first set the foundation and come up with solutions that might solve the problem okay hi this is also i think a quite a common question i work for a corporate firm and the work that we do is mostly confidential it becomes a problem in terms of switch what can be done in that case so what you can check is you can see if there are certain aspects of the process that you can showcase maybe if you remove the names and you can show them a little bit of the research if you try and eliminate certain specific features show a bit of the wireframe but if that is the case try and have a little bit um, work that you've done on the side so some any hypothetical project that you worked on to show your expertise right to show that yes i have one project where you can see my sales and you can see the quality of work and then i can maybe explain to you or maybe walk you through uh, without sharing anything over screen share a few elements of something that i've done for other projects but you'll have to try and talk to them and see what the agreement is like so that you can share it so this one this question is is it mandatory to study both ux and ui for getting a job it's not at all you can do one and then learn the other on the job it really up to you there are people now who specialize in only ux and only ui so there is a lot of potential in this field to be able to find your niche here. how often do design trends change and how long do they last on average you should keep yourself up to date uh, on these things because there is no specific timeline per se right certain designs trends have not changed over the years how a uh, e-commerce platform works has been working sort of for a really long time with incremental change that is happening whereas maybe your entire fintech is getting revolutionized so there's a lot happening and the more that you expose yourself to the more you'll understand but as such be constantly at it to know more and to see what is happening around you and that should keep you up with the times
And then I have faced the interview. They like my travel screen designs where they ask for the front end. I did not understand this question, Jeevan. Sorry. One funny question. What are your thoughts about Figma acquired by Adobe? I hate it. I absolutely hate it. I do not know what's going to happen now and if it's going to be the extremely loved product anymore or not, but we have to wait and see. They've been acquired at like, I read 50 times the price. So that's something um, I'm sure they could say no to it. How to get ideas for mock-ups and how to get started in making a professional way. So there are really good websites now, anonymous attendee. There is, you know, your Behance, there is a Triple, which you can just look to get inspired. You have uh, awards as a website, which also has some really good mock-ups. But what I would recommend is that there are certain, um, if you just Google and you try and find out, I can't remember all of the names right now. It's been a while since I made mock-ups, but uh, you can try and get them. And uh, more than just, oh, you said mock projects. I'm so sorry. Mock projects. There is this website called IDEO. I think it gives you product um, uh, problem statements. So you can actually just look at that and build on it. It's a great tool. Additionally, you can do redesigns of some apps that you feel like need an improvement. You can look at medium case studies. There are lots there which might uh, inspire you to create something of your own. And to do it in a professional way would be to be as thorough as possible. Don't rush the process. Take your time. It's probably the first time you're doing it. Starting from the first section, from defining the brief, learn everything about it. How do you define a brief? If you're doing a redesign, what are the 10 steps for redesign? What are the questions you need to ask for the redesign? Create like a structure in place and then take one step at a time. Hone that skill when you're at the research phase, do it really well. Do it for like two weeks and then go on to say the wireframe and then go on to the UI. That way, that one project that you do will give you enormous amount of learning rather than if you do it in the setup of a design sprint. What, according to me, is the most important step when it comes to problem solving and building a case study? So building a case study is different because it's majorly a documentation. But problem solving, I would say to solve a problem, like I said, research, of course, is very important. But a lot of times you feel a little bit of referencing. So what you should really do is that you should look at everything possible. So suppose if you were to create tomorrow e-commerce platform for uh, furniture and decor, the first thing would be to look at what is happening around you. To look at everything possible under the sun so that you have this complete wide database of knowledge and then you build from that. To be able to solve problems, first you need to see what is happening around you. And then you also need to identify the problem, right? Like if you, a lot of times um, we get into trying to just create something and say that there is, you know, we go into the solution aspect. But defining the problem is even more important. And the way to define a problem is not looking at it just objectively but to also take a step back and see what is not working. And that happens through your research, qualitative, quantitative, looking at the current existing app and identifying core problem areas, not minor things. These are not fixes that you can make that you can, if you change the site to a minimal website, it's suddenly going to work. Or if you, uh, you know, move the navigation around, it's going to work. These are core foundational problems that you would like to solve. As a designer, what are the things that need to be taken care of during mobile app testing? There are a lot of tools now, uh, Manoj Kumar. So, you know, you can have a look at those. But uh, keep in mind that testing should not always be that you've created something and you give it to the users to test. You have to form some sort of a script in your head. So there has to be test cases. That means that you're going to test out a particular flow. You see what, how much time they're spending on it. There's something called a task analysis where you give the users a goal and you see the time that they take and their entire experience throughout. So a lot of these metrics, uh, I won't get into any details, where you can actually identify these five, six points, create an entire script for you, and then go ahead and test for you to be able to get something tangible out of it. Because otherwise, if you just give it for testing and uh, for user testing that way, you will not come up with substantial amount of data because people are very qualitative about the work that they say. But at the time of testing, we need something more substantial. We need to do it with enough people. And we also need to get uh, deeper insights to be able to take the call whether we have to go back and change the design or not. 
how to do time management and devote time to design when there is a lot of collaboration happening with design teams, meetings, blah, blah, blah. how one thing members handle multiple clients if someone is working multiple clients. Yeah, see, that's a thing which is another thing I was going to add in that presentation was prioritization and time management, extremely, extremely important. So right now, um, say for a senior designer, they would ideally have two to three projects running. Mostly two. For a junior designer, they would probably have one. I'm giving you a very baseline understanding to help you understand how people sort of operate and what the rules require. But say right now, say for my role, if there are seven projects or seven clients and I have to be on every meeting, we have to schedule it in a way that I am also able to, as a designer, give my time, give the team my time to design for feedback, for critiquing, for reviewing. And generally what that happens is... Um, we outline a flow to it. So say there are three weeks of research. So when there are three weeks of research happening, parallelly in the other project, there's something where we are at the stage of wireframing. In another project, we're at the stage of UI design so that those teams don't mix and clash in a way that everything happens together. So it's incremental. And of course, as you progress, it becomes a little easier throughout the entire project. But it really depends on how much you can take on your plate. Never overburden yourself with work because then you will not be able to do a good job. Try and focus on as much as possible. Even right now, we would have, say, for me, I would have, say, three projects which would be critical where, you know, there is daily uh, collaboration, feedback, designing happening. And then there are two which are very slow-paced where the requirements are more once in two weeks. One more question. As we know what that design process is, so as a UX UI designer, what should I do to increase my brand value? Do good work, yeah. Just do good work. You will automatically increase your brand value. Do good work. Talk about the work in a good manner. Present it well. Be able to justify it. Uh, get your foundational knowledge. All of those things. And never copy designs ever. Big no. And uh, you can, there's a book called Steal Like an Artist. So, you know, you, if you guys have gone through it, you will see that you can get inspired by anything. But to be copying something, it, it ruins your credibility, right? So if you've done it once, there's, it, it's a bad thing anyway. But try and initially when you start as a new uh, designer and you want to learn, it is a good idea to copy, but not to post that stuff. So you're copying to learn, to understand how these um, experience designers are actually creating those visual things and am I able to replicate or not so even say as an artist right so when I was younger and I would I was learning how to draw I would first copy the say how we do still life also we copy it first and then we transform it into something else so the first step with copying is completely fine but keep it to yourself don't copy on the later stages of creating a product for somebody else for learning it's a it's a you know it's completely fine but otherwise it's not. So do good work and that should help you with your brand value. And uh, as a designer, I would say you're just constantly growing. So there is no going backwards. There's always going forwards. So the, all the work that you've done so far in life will always inform the work that you're going to do later on in life. So. All right. I think we covered majorly everything, Nija. I know also our time is up. Um, so over to you. Thank you so much. It's always a delight to hear you. And thanks for painstakingly covering all the questions, all the personalized doubts that students were having. Also, uh, just to highlight uh, the course that uh, was spoken about in the in one of the doubts, as you were saying, that is your course. You are one of the masters in that particular course. I have shared the link and I'm again sharing the link. So if anyone wants to know more about it, please feel free to take a tour of the website and um, please feel free to reach out to connect to our uh, admissions team as well for any help and any last minute thoughts that you'd like to share before we leave Antara? I think we covered majorly everything guys it was really fun I know I wanted this sort of session to be more question answer specific because it's about jobs and finding a job and doing the right thing so I hope that helps and I'm really hoping to see most of you uh, in the course that we're going to take, it's going to be super exciting. I know these are very short sessions where we're doing all this virtually. I can't get to see your faces. I'm just talking to Nirja throughout and addressing her with uh, uh, every answer that I sort of give out. But um, all right, we've got more. One thing is doing great. Yes, uh, please. I would love for you guys to apply. If you guys want to apply, more than welcome. But uh, see you guys, some of you in October, hopefully. Thank you so much, Nirja. 
Thank you, everyone. And thanks so much, Antara. Thank you for the webinar. Really always a delight to watch you, hear you during the podcast or during the webinar. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.